but check out my boy Chad's new whip. If you guys remember Chad, Chad and I went to the drag strip and he had a, what, a Mercedes AMG? GTS, yeah. GTS, AMG GTS that he did his first pass in. Now look at him. All grown up, dude. It's his birthday today. Thank He's you. got a new car. Divorced his wife. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not divorced, free. <laughs> <laughs> Things pretty sick, man. I'm definitely jealous. I was giving him a hard time because when we first met, he was like, hey, I think I'm going to buy something cool. And I was like, whatever you do, do not buy a Mercedes. Well, he went out and bought a Mercedes. But now that thing's gone after he hit a raccoon. He got himself a turbo. Clean, brother. Thanks, Zach, he said he'd fix that. And put like a Deutsch or a quick disconnect on there. This is new harness territory, right? New here. harness territory. <laughs> you know, literally, I mean, you know, there's literally, literally unplugs, a connector. unplugs are right here. I mean, look at look at him. Look. Hey, back away from that, dude. This is the doors on. <laughs> He's, gonna... He's gonna buy me new tires, all right? <laughs> no, that's what he told me too. <laughs> Guys, Heston's been working on this thing for hours, and he ripped my clear coat off of the paint. The, the clear coat, obviously, your biggest your biggest problem here. No, that's fine. This is what I'm worried about. Yeah, all right. Screw everything else that's wrong with the car. Now my clear coat's gone. Bill me. Bill me. <laughs> you working for free today? <laughs> well, uh, I was didn't not... start working until you showed up, Parker. <laughs> <Let's> not get... <laughs> He's been playing all day. <laughs> I'm yeah. catch up. Gets here, and then you guys go to lunch. Dude, he went to lunch. You go to lunch, and then he's got to poop and scroll on his phone for an hour, and then he gets all his stuff out, and then they got to pull the car then outside. Then he had to call his brother to help him finish. And I then know. his brother's here now. I had to let it sit in the sun for a couple hours to heat it up. Now it's back in the shade. <laughs> Day one, ripping this thing apart. We are working hard on getting the wrap off, and I'm going to start pulling the rear bumper cover off so that we don't have to worry about the wrap on that and start cleaning out the inside because this thing is absolutely smoked, literally. I appreciate all the tips on getting this thing cleaned up as far as the cigarette smell goes. And let's see, we got that to do and yeah, one little piece at a time here, one little piece at a time. There's a lot of comments in last night's video about what I should do with the Hellcat and maybe I should like put an exo cage on it like Leroy and make it like a uh, Hellroy. To be honest, I'm not really sure what to do, so let me know in the comments below what you think I should do with the Hellcat. I've got kind of two options how I see it. One would be restore it to its original condition, make it look like a perfect car with an absolute powerhouse of a drivetrain, or go like full Mad Max with this thing and do like a crazy cage on the outside, no body panels. I think I already know which one I want to do, and because I'm not really a clout chaser, I might just restore it back to normal, but let me know in the comments what you think I should do with it. Well, this rear bumper cover is obviously absolutely cranked. When I started to take it off, this rear taillight just fell out of place. So we got to get that back into its spot. Uh, we got to secure this one on a little better because it's pretty loose, but it's looking pretty crispy back here. I think we had a couple wires either get cut. I think Garrett probably did that. Yeah, Garrett definitely did that. No way. What are you guys doing? Dude, your shirt's way too clean for having to clean the shop all day. That's why I got this. You've been supervising today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so lots to do here, guys. I got an alkyl control kit I got to pull off. We got to clean up some wiring, replace this, this cowl right here. I also need to figure out what I'm going to do with this power steering. This power steering tank is super, super small, so it boils quickly and then I lose all power steering. So if you have a solution for that, let me know. I think I'm gonna put kind of like an overflow reservoir right here and have it kind of set up like we do for the transmissions and the drag cars. Like when they have a power glide, they put it up high. So when it overflows, it goes up and then it drains back down. So that's kind of my plan for that. But if you know something better, let me know. I'm gonna replace these lines with some AN, AN lines to clean it up and the car's looking really good with the red back, but you know, there's kind of some dents and things all around the car. So definitely need some body work. The clear coat's starting to peel off as well as we're removing more of this wrap. You know, we got to replace this, new rear bumper cover, remount that light. The list goes on and on and on, but I started 
getting into the interior a little bit. The interior obviously needs a really good cleaning. I got to remove that handbrake, replace the center console lid. Just lots of little details. So it's definitely a project. I'm glad I'm undertaking it because I truly love Hellcats. I think they're super sick cars. All right, we got a new addition to the stable. And if y'all have been around for a while, you'll know that I used to have a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited with 37s. It was a pretty sick truck. And then when I started dating my wife, it was her dream car to have a Jeep. So I segued her into the Jeep and then, you know, got my trucks and kind of moved into my own vehicles. So with her career as a real estate agent, driving a lifted Wrangler wasn't an ideal situation. So, so the car that I ended up getting her is actually a really interesting story. Back in like 2015, 2016, Audi went through a huge scandal called Dieselgate. And if y'all don't know what Dieselgate is, basically they were selling their diesel vehicle that performed extremely well and also got great gas mileage. Well, this is one of those cars that was involved in this diesel gate because what ended up happening was the EPA found out that Audi was basically tuning their cars so that anytime somebody would do a smog test or, or attach something to the OBD2, it would essentially put it into a guarded safe tune so that it would produce a lot less emissions than it did when driving around normally on the street. You can click on the link below to learn more about this whole scandal, but basically the CEO of Audi ended up stepping down. There was a, lots of lawsuits and they ended up doing a big warranty and payback to those who owned any of these diesel Audi cars. So this is one of those vehicles that was involved in the Audi diesel gate. All right, so here it is. It's a 2015 Porsche Cayenne. And the crazy part about this is this thing only has like, it only has 30 or 40,000 miles and it has like 150,000 mile warranty on it because of this diesel gate issue. Not only that, but these cars, you can pick them up for mid twenties. This car we got for $25,000, which is actually worth less than the Wrangler. So kind of a crazy trade to be trading this Wrangler for a uh, Porsche Cayenne that really hasn't lost any of the styling to the modern Cayennes. And yeah, it's coming up on being probably 10 years old at this point, but it runs and drives great. And it's a great car for her to be working in the field with. So here it is. I don't really, I haven't done anything to it because I don't want to avoid this crazy warranty that's on here. But I mean, I think it's pretty sick deal for 25 grand open the door got the you know cream interior 36,000 miles not bad the back end looks like all the other Porsche Cayennes and yeah pretty stoked about this thing so yeah guys a little update on the garage it's a huge mess right now I need to get all this stuff out of here I need to get the garage cleaned up all my tool benches my work area just, oh, it's a mess, it's driving me crazy, but I haven't had, really had any projects because I've been going up to the shop to work on the Hellcat. So once we get the riverboat back into the United States, I'm gonna be working on it a lot here and building an engine for that. So this is a great area. I love the lighting and the black garage doors and there's tons of videos on my channel about when I built this garage and put the lift in and been working on my cars ever since we moved in in about a year and a half. Yes, I live in an HOA that's, a huge thing for people and me, it totally sucks, but at least I have a nice place to work on my cars. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.